Hello, Aquarius. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Aquarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. If there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive uh, to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aquarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we begin with the Devil Energy. This is a very strong, very ambitious card. Um, let's see what's going on with this energy right now. Okay, this is really, this is an, an energy that is um, like ready to climb a mountain, you know. Um, just has kind of no reservations. Um, feels as if there are no limitations. Now we get that 10. Now it's almost as if you're, you're there's something that it, it feels like you're putting... Um, almost all of your your energy into uh, probably not almost it probably literally is is everything you've got going into this thing now we've got some earth energy coming out Ooh, a lot of earth energy and some water so we have fives on both sides right and I, I wonder if this is what we're trying to solve the five of pentacles the five of cups there is some worry and some concern in the physical environment and that's causing some kind of mental uh, and emotional insecurity or uncertainty so we're looking to really change that we're looking to build that we're looking to build something that's going to solidify these um you know hopefully into the sixes well let's see what else we've got we've got a four of swords oh we've got the knight of cups that's always a good card there's the six see there it is so um it's in a weird position though. we'll get to why that might be and now we've got another court card with the knight um of swords there let's select the mystery card bonus card confirmation card this is one random card from the smith weight tarot and we are just going to set it down over here we're going to put tiny bob ross right there on top happy little bob and uh we're not going to look at that card until the very end but it will you know tie everything together uh, and it will give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading Okay, if at any point during the reading you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to shout it out. Put it down in the comments, right? Let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise in intuition. All right, I think it'll be fun. Uh, but let's take a look around the room because I'm noticing now that really this devil energy is the only major arcana card that we have. Okay, um, and we... We have fire. The only fire we have too is in is right here in the middle. With that, it's fueling that uh, that devil energy. Okay, um, so we've got our major arcana. We've got our fire. We we have water. Um, we've got air too. And we've got our, a lot of earth energy. So I feel like we're really solidifying something. This is really, this is good. I love the energy that we have. We've got a five of cups. We see the solution here with the knight of cups, right? But we're not just accepting the, um, the sadness, the sorrow. We're, we're kind of going out and we're, we're, we're doing something with it. We're not just allowing it to isolate us, right? Because we see here with the four of swords... It's kind of closing off the communication, but see, we fix that too with the Knight of Swords. And I think that whatever you're working on here is really starting to fire up your ambition, you know. Um, and the, the thing about the, the Devil Energy, we're going to start with this card and we'll come back to this card because it is the only major arcana. And it's right there in the center of you, right? It's your ambition. Yes, it's your it's your readiness, your willingness, your eagerness to climb this mountain. I think you've you've probably found uh, the right kind of project for yourself, the right kind of uh, pursuit. You've, you've found a mountain that you want to climb, you know. And that is, that's tremendous. Um, the shadow side of this, though, is that 
we sometimes use this kind of energy to avoid what's really going on, to avoid kind of how we're feeling, to avoid, um, well, some of the five of cups, I think, right? So it's very important that we're not trying to distract ourselves from the negative emotions and trying to kind of put them aside because then this come, becomes um, more of an escape than a real soul-satisfying project that you're, that you're doing, right? Or, or mountain that you're climbing. So we've got to be careful that we aren't... Um, we aren't using this Ten of Wands, right, um, to, to completely exhaust ourselves so that we don't have to think or feel or worry about these fives on either side of us. Okay, and that's really, that's the only kind of caveat with these two because this is, this is really a lot of energy, a lot of focus, um, a, lot of, um, a lot of willpower, right? And when we talk about willpower, especially with the Ten of Wands, because I really feel as if uh, this is something that you've put everything into, we've got to be careful um, because you don't really know that it's going to work, right? There's always in life, I don't care who you are, there's always a little bit of uncertainty. We could be 99.9999% sure it's going to work, and that we've got everything we need to get to the top of the mountain, but there's still that unknown quality. We can't control everything, right? So we put all of this willpower into something. We also have to be prepared just in case it doesn't turn out exactly the way we want it to, right? When we just, we've got to get that out of the way. We've got to prepare ourselves for that. I think that's why we've got a five of cups here. Just saying you've got to learn how to deal with some sorrow and disappointment and, and these kind of, you know, so-called negative emotions, my air quotes, um, so that when they do arise, and they will in life, I can almost guarantee that you will have some sort of um, five of cups moment sometime, somewhere in life. We're prepared to deal with that. You know, that we know how to take this and we know how to not, not fix it, how to accept it, how to learn from it, and how to use that to increase our giving and receiving of love and affection, right? This is kind of, this is reaching out to the support system, so to speak, but we'll, we'll get to these cards in a minute. I want to continue with this goat energy because I really do, I really do love the, the devil card. I think it's a wonderful card in the tarot. It does have light and shadow, of course. Um, I wonder if, I wonder if some of you are feeling, and especially with this ten of wands, I'm getting this. I'm getting a feeling like some of you are having some like knee problems, you know, because this is it, this feels like um, energetically feels like a lot of weight on you, and I feel like we're really, we're really giving everything we have here, even though. I really think it's the knees more than anything, but just this kind of um, uh, general strain on your body, right, for, for what you're doing here. And it is some sort of a physical project, physical activity. It's some sort of a, um, it could be a career thing. It could be something health, fitness related. It could be something financial. It could be that you're literally building something, maybe a car, maybe a house, you know. Uh, just be careful with the knees, so I've got to say, rest your knees, ice them down. You know, what do they say? Rest, ice, cold, and, and uh, no, what is it? What is the rice thing? I can't remember now. Uh, elevation, I think, is the, the last one. But um, take care of those joints, you know, because the Ten of Wands really is showing kind of all of your body's energy being put into this. All of your, your spiritual psychic energy, too, is being put into this. Because the Ten is very much... Um, uh, kind of draws from every other energetic body, all the way down to the, the physical energy. Yeah, because we've got to be careful with this. Now, why are you so ambitious with this? What is it that you are really um, working on? Well, there's this five of pentacles back here. Okay, and the five of pentacles is usually some kind of worry, some kind of uncertainty. Um, it's, 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 it could be health, it could be, you know, fitness, it could be finances, right? There's some uncertainty here. It feels like the ground is not quite stable. And nobody really likes that, you know? I'm from California. We had earthquakes. Nobody likes them, 
right? I don't care how long you've lived in California. I don't live there now. Um, I, I couldn't afford to live there now. Uh, but um, nobody likes the earthquakes. It doesn't matter how long you've lived there. Every time the earth starts to shake, you get scared, right? You're lying if you say you don't. Um, because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know, is the earth ever going to stop shaking? Is it going to just open up and swallow all of us? Uh, and it's kind of like that energetically with these either physical uncertainties or financial uncertainties. These are the, the, um, the uncertainties of the external world. Could even be other people's behavior, right? Not being able to predict things. Feeling like things are out of your control. There's worry, there's stress, there's anxiety here. Okay. And I think this is what we're fixing. Or this is what we're trying to, this is what we're trying to improve. We're trying to uh, stabilize this. Okay. And the same with the five of cups, because one five kind of goes hand in hand with the other, right? The five of cups here is, is almost saying that, you know, because of the instability in the physical environment, now there's this kind of I feel the uncertainty inwardly, you know, and both of these cards, while they are odd numbered cards, they are active cards. They're a function of our lives, of our psyche, of our energy. They're passive elements, right? So this is kind of like something that I'm doing or feeling because of energy coming in from the outside, right? Not because of energy that I'm putting out, but it's something that almost feels like it's happening to me, right? That my life is uncertain. My emotions are all over the place, up and down, roller coaster, because of everything that's happening in life, happening to me. So there's this implied sense of um, not having the control that we want. Yeah. And that's where we get back to that devil card again, because the devil card is the way that we can, um, let's look at it from, from above here, so you can see that these two things are really flanking you, you know. And this is the way that we might focus on other things, focus on this other project, this other intensity, um, you know, to try to not deal with these two, to try to not really feel the effects of these two, right? To kind of, you know, to kind of avoid these. And I think that's a natural, um, a natural reaction to this kind of stress and uncertainty. So let's be, let's be mindful, I guess. You know, let's, let's be aware of, of what we're doing and let's not be afraid of these feelings, right? Because these are, these are going to stick around. And if we ignore them, I think they're going to get worse. Um, down beneath everything, two of pentacles. It's all about change, right? This is the feeling that you do have power. You do have control over something, right? And if we add the two to either of these fives, well, we get a seven. A seven is all about love. A seven is all about confidence, right? It's another kind of active uh, energy. It's a function. This is a card that says we can control the things that we can control, and the rest we just accept and deal with the best that we can. Yeah. So you do have control over some things. There are things that you can focus on. You can take positive steps to build this thing, to improve this thing, whether this is health, whether this is finances, whether you're, you know, trying to stabilize your physical environment in whichever way. There are things that you can do. And we need we should focus on those things. We've got that right up here with this builder. This is the prince of pentacles right up here at the top of the path of the dove. And this is indeed saying that you're focused on building this life up, right? Now, we just, like I said, we have to be careful that this devil isn't uh, letting some of its shadow side show. That's hard to say. <laughs> say that three times fast. Um, and that we're building a life that is kind of centered on avoiding these things, right? That we're cuz that's then we're kind of just building a tower, right? We're isolating ourselves from from, you know, how we feel even when sometimes we do feel uncertain, scared, we have negative emotions, etc. Um so be careful that you're not completely exhausting your energy building this thing, working on this thing in order to avoid this. Let's make sure we're doing it. Oh, sorry, Bob. 
bumped into little Bob Ross there. Uh, let's make sure we're not avoiding these, okay? Because these, this is what we're really trying to focus on. We need to feel the five so that we can feel, you know, as it uh, as it improves as we work through this. We need to feel the five of pentacles so that we can make the positive changes, and you know, find a way to this the good solid stability we see in the six of pentacles. So this is really nice. Now with the prince uh, of pentacles up here, this is you. Um, this is you, you know, kind of doing the, the work. This is you committed to something um, and, and focusing on this idea of um, staying the course. If I can just focus on what I'm doing, the rest of this stuff will take care of itself, you know. And so this, too, is kind of that fixed earth energy where um, we stay. It's almost a tunnel vision, you know. Um, it, it's almost kind of just burying your head in your work, so to speak, in order to avoid the fives. So we got to be careful with that. I think that's, I think that's, um, that'll create a little bit more, um, it'll do more harm than good. All right. And be careful of those knees for sure. Make sure that you take time to rest. You don't have to go 24 hours a day, 365, you know, you need to, you need to come home in the evenings and take care of yourself, you know. And maybe those are the moments when you're when you stop functioning at a level ten. Um, uh, that that's when you will start feeling the fives, you know. And maybe that's when you slow down at the end of the day. That's when you feel the five of pentacles. That's when you, the knees start hurting and you really feel like, I don't, you know, this is really wearing me out. Um, but I think there's the emotional component of that too. And it's usually when we stop, when we stop doing that intense activity, and that's when we start to feel sore, you know. And I think that you kind of got this um, this athlete um, uh, outlook on things, where if you're sore, best thing to do, go back to the gym and just exercise those muscles again. Soreness will go away until you stop, you know. Until you stop doing that, then you're really going to feel it. Sometimes it's it's better to feel it. And work through it and understand what that pain means. And understand what you need to do in order to, to deal with it and be okay with it. To accept it, we don't have to like it. You know, and that's why I think we need those rest days from the gym. Uh, in order to feel that, um, feel that soreness. You know, to, to listen to our bodies, to feel what's going on there. And I think the same thing emotionally. You know, We're going to move to the path of the serpent and as we do this... I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Totally free, right? Doesn't cost you anything. And leave a comment for me. I really do enjoy hearing from all of you. I love the when you shout out where you're watching from. We have viewers from all over the world, and it's it's really fascinating how uh, how international, how global uh, this is. Um, I really do enjoy that, and I appreciate all of you. Okay, so now we're kind of learning where to take all of this stuff. And first thing we've got is that four of swords. And I, I wonder if this is maybe if you're a little bit closed off to um, intimate communication or to really kind of sharing any of this with with others. You know, do you have someone that you can talk to? You know, is there someone that kind of knows what's really going on or are we just completely just like vertical here? You know, and just focused on this. And this is the this is what you talk about. This is what's going on with you. This is where we we always uh, take our conversations. The four of, four of Swords here is recommending that we expand our conversations. You know, do you find that when you're with your friends or your family or your kids, your spouse, whatever, um, that the conversation always tends to be about this work that you do or this project that you do or this focus, whatever this might be, right? This building. Um, is that all we tend to talk about? You know, uh, so I think the idea here is that we've we're a little bit closed off, you know, mentally, and um, it would serve you well, I think, and that's why we've got this knight of swords here at the end. It would serve you well to you know um, expand your your network of friends, talk about other things, 
you know, talk about the weather, talk about the news, talk about, you know, anything else other than this focus on what you're doing, because this devil energy does have a tendency to become kind of an obsession, right? Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, okay? I think people who have that ability to become obsessed with something and they focus on it and they build it, those are the people that really achieve, okay? Obsession, like everything in life, is not black and white, right? There are shades of gray. Um, there are nuances. There's light and shadow with that whole idea of obsession, you know, that intense kind of focus. Um, it can go too far where we're, we're blocking out other things in life. You know, for instance, other ways of connecting with people, to find uh, deeper connections, right? To kind of just expand your mind, to just exercise that mental muscle and think about different things, talk about different things. And I guarantee that will help you in this work that you're doing, whatever this focus is. Um, kind of expanding that mental energy will, will assist with this, even if you don't really, you don't think so in the moment. Trust me. All right, it will. Uh, the next card is, is very cool because it's the Knight of Cups. And that was our daily card yesterday. We did an impromptu daily card um, for yesterday. I, I want to bring the daily card back, but it just... Um, I already spend so much time in the studio, it's hard for me to convince my wife to let me do another half an hour down here. Um, but we'll see. I, I want to bring it back. But the point here is um, that we need to deepen our connections with people. This is the Knight of Cups. It's in the position of the environment. It's in the position of your relationships with the environment. right? And this is really saying, um, you know, we need to focus on giving and receiving love and affection, right? That we need to um, we need to maintain and nurture our connections, especially our intimate relationships, not just when there's trouble, you know. Uh, it's easy, I think, when, when things are going wrong, when we feel a five of cups kind of happening, then we reach out to people. Or if somebody else is kind of in a five of cups thing, that's when people, that's when you would reach out to them, you know. And, and that's fine. That's good. We need that kind of support system. But I'm almost wondering if that tends to, like, positively reinforce that five of cups, you know, because then well, well, when I'm in a five of cups energy, that's when people seem to care. You know, or that's when I'm supposed to reach out to, you know, to other peoples when they're in that five of cups energy. So I think the Knight of cups is here to remind us to express our love and affection, our care. Right. Even when there isn't a five of cups. And, you know, that's that's how we kind of learn to deal with the five of cups, um, because then we we realize and we're hopefully influencing other people to make similar realizations that there are people that care about us even when we're not in crisis, even when we're not in a Five of Cups energy. Yeah. So this card is saying that um, it's time to nurture those close connections, intimate connections, but, but really all connections. You know, um, check in with your people, even when they don't have a problem. You know, we don't have to wait for them to be in need before we can reach out. And I think doing that is a, a positive example, and others will, um, you know, others will, will do that for you. And that's really, to me, that's a support system. You know, we support each other not only in bad times, but in good times, too, you know. Um, some of your friends, have they, um, or family members or some, have they made some recent achievements in their life? Have they reached a milestone in their personal lives? Can you reach out and, and celebrate that with them, congratulate them on that. We don't just call people when they, they didn't get the job to say how, how sorry we are, but we call them when they did get the job to say, I'm proud of you, I'm excited for you, you know? And I think that's, that's the kind of support system that we want. And I think for your own Five of Cups energy, I think that's a good way for you to learn to to kind of deal with this. We're not getting rid of it. We're not trying to flip it over and ignore it, 
right? We're not trying to clarify it with other cards. We don't, you know, it just, it's a feeling. We don't need to try to intellectualize it. We don't need to understand it. We just feel it. And we try to deal with those feelings in a way that's positive and constructive and healthy. Yeah. So the next card, Six of Pentacles. Uh, this card, weirdly, is in the position of what you don't want. Okay. And to me, what this is really saying is that you don't want the physical, or, or I should say it's not really what you don't want. It's the kind of fear and worry here. It's what we're, what we're kind of trying to avoid. And it feels like you don't want the physical stability to happen. We don't want to go from a five of pentacles to a six of pentacles. We've succeeded. We've overcome this difficulty, this uncertainty, whatever this is, if it's debt, if it's a health thing. Um, we're worried that we will fix it or it will be fixed, right? We will overcome it in some way, but we still won't feel. We won't feel the six of cups, you know? We won't feel the six of pentacles. We'll still have a five of cups, you know? I think that's why this card is here. Because, you know, we, we want to overcome the physical difficulties. But what if? What if everything gets fixed, but I still feel like this? You know, this is the worry. This is why we kind of don't want this. We want to just stay tunnel vision, keep, keep your head down, bury yourself in your work and do this. Because then, you know, we don't have the six of pentacles, but it kind of keeps the fives away. You know, you got a bad case of the fives here. Um, but I think through the Knight of Cups energy, I think we're learning that even when we do achieve this victory, we overcome this physical thing that's going on, there will be, there's, yeah, the Five of Cups, you know what, still will, it will, it'll be there. It's not going away. It might fluctuate into a Six of Cups, maybe back to a Five of, maybe a Four of Cups. Right, the energy is always flowing, especially the um, the emotional energy, seems to change quicker than the physical energy. So the five of five of pentacles into the six of pentacles, you know, this isn't going to stay a six either. You know, we overcome this particular challenge or this particular obstacle. We succeed in stabilizing this right now for the time being, but it'll fluctuate too. Right, and so will the emotions. I wonder if the um, the mystery card is going to be like a six of cups, maybe. You know, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> we kind of already talked about the knight of swords, and I think that this is really um, initiating kind of new exploration in your in your consciousness. You know, uh, learn about some different things, read some different books. Right, focus on something that has nothing to do with this work or this project or this problem, whatever it is. Focus on something else for a while. Give your mind a break. Let it explore other flights of fancy, other interests. You know, read a fiction book or something, right? Um, explore other things. Communicate with other people. Talk about different things, you know, just to give your energy a chance to replenish. It's been so strained in this one particular track that I think it needs a little bit of um, kind of a mental reprieve. Yeah. Um, but let's look at the mystery card now. Okay. I'm, um, I'm quite curious about this one. I don't, I don't know what it could be other than, of course, I'm thinking of the, um, thinking of the, the six of cups. But it could be another five, right? We don't, we don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, if you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. I mean, look in here. All I really can think is, is I want, I mean, we had the five of pentacles, six of pentacles. Good. Um, we had the five of cups, but then we had the knight of cups to kind of match with that. So we've got the four of swords, and we've got the knight of swords to kind of balance that out, right? Problem solution. Um, we have the fire energy. We have that ten of wands. We don't really have a solution to that, so maybe a six of wands. Right. Let's just see what we have. Oh, 
All right, okay, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. This is this is kind of all of it, right? Uh, this is um, this is the way your life is always growing and expanding. Your life is always changing, right? This is a card of change, I think. But this is the the cosmic timepiece. This is spirit's wristwatch, you know. Um, we don't uh, we don't tell time the same way. So things don't always happen according to our timetable, and that's why we get fives in our life. Because five is just is kind of us not understanding why things are happening when they're happening, or maybe we understand it, we don't like it. Right? It worries us. Um, but the universe operates on a just completely different timetable, right? Completely different uh, schedule than we do. So I think that's that's part of what's going on here too, but also with this Wheel of Fortune. I feel like this is. Um, I feel like we're we're living on this wheel, right? This is this is the natural flow of life, and this is again just kind of that the cosmic cycles, the cosmic kind of timeline. Um, there will be points where you're at the bottom of this wheel, and there will be times where you're at the top of the wheel, right? Um, but even when you're on the bottom of the wheel, right, and things don't seem that great, the wheel's still turning. Now, our, our duty is to just endure the low, low points until things can swing back around again, focusing again on what we can do, right? And what we can do is usually about um, kind of minimizing the, the kind of negative effects of the fives, of being at the low point of the wheel, right? Because there are things that we can't, that we can't control. We don't control how fast the wheel goes. If we're on the bottom, we have to endure it. And if you are on the bottom, it means the wheel's still turning. You know, this wheel doesn't get stuck. So I think this is a really good card, and I think it kind of, uh, it puts things into, into perspective. Because like I was saying before, we've got the six, but yeah, we're going to have a five again. You know, it, we, t we will. It's not, you know, that's, that's just the way it goes. Um, and we have to be ready for that. Even when we're here at the six, and I think this is why you've got a little bit of anxiety about the six of pentacles. Because even when we're at the six of pentacles, we know that spirit can just kind of fling us right back to the beginning, right back into the fives at any time. So we have to kind of mentally and emotionally prepare for that. Um, and just because this doesn't feel the best, just because we have the five of cups, it doesn't mean that anything's wrong. Right, and that's kind of the thing, because the fives, we see the fives, especially five of pentacles, five of, of cups, we think danger. We start getting anxious, right? It's natural. It's a natural flow. It's the natural cycles of life. So I think this is a very good card. I think this is a very good reading for you. Now, we're going to do an extended reading. And if you want to stick around, click on the link up in the corner or down below in the video description. Um, I'm here every day from 6 to 8 a.m. Chicago time. Come back and see me again tomorrow. Okay. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Totally free. Doesn't cost you anything. Right. And uh, leave a comment for me. I really enjoy reading all of your comments. And I do read them all. Um, also, if you have a small business or a YouTube channel or a book or whatever you're working on, if you want to plug something, if you want to advertise something, head over to the Dove and Serpent Tarot channel page on YouTube, go to the community section, and the first post there is where, in the comments, you can put your link to your, your channel, your website, to your book, to your whatever it is, right? Whatever you want to advertise. Let's make it kind of a, um, a Dove and Serpent Tarot uh, Yellow Pages or something, yeah. I want us all to support each other. This is all part of being, being that support system, right? And, and that's what I want this whole community to be. Right, that we're there in good times and bad times to support each other. Right. Anyway, I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you, and I love you, and we're all in this together.